The Adventures of David Perkins. Like, subscribe, comment. Hello and welcome to The Adventures of David Perkins. This time I'm walking around Castle Acre Priory in the county of Norfolk in England. The town of Castle Acre today contains the remains of a Norman modern bailey castle and a Cluniac Priory, and what was once massive 12th century town defences. Castle Acre offers a rare and powerful impression of the impact of the Norman conquest on the ownership, government and even the appearance of England. The castle, priory and town defences were built by the de Warn family. De Warn was a Norman knight who had fought alongside King William I at the Battle of Hastings in the year 1066. William de Warne's wealth grew from his allegiance to the king, and by the early 1070s he had chosen Acre as the headquarters of his Norfolk properties. Here, as at hundreds of other sites across the country, the new lords built castles and churches. In the 1080s, William de Warne had settled a small group of monks near his Norfolk home, brought from Acre from William de Warne's base at Lewis in Sussex. In the 1090s, William de Warne's heir, also called William, would give the monks of Castle Acre land for the building of a new monastery. Although William de Warne and his successors remained great figures on the national stage for many years, the castle at Castle Acre would sink into relative obscurity, and with the closure of the priory during the dissolution of the monasteries in 1537, the prominence of the town in Norfolk would come to an end. The priory is, however, remarkably well preserved, and is among the most intact priories in England today. The layout of the current town of Castle Acre still bears the stamp of its medieval defences, and although the castle was abandoned in the Middle Ages, its Norman earthworks are, like the priory, some of the most impressive in the country. The de Warne's first religious foundation in England was in the early 1080s with the Priory of St Pancras at Lewis in Sussex. The monks that populated this monastery came from the Abbey of Cluny in France. The wife of William de Warne, Gundrada, had family links to the Abbey of Cluny, and it was after an unplanned visit to Castle Acre by some of these monks sometime between the year 1081 and 1083 that some of them settled and by leave of the de Warnes formed a monastery, making Acre possibly the first Cluniac monastery in England. The de Warnes gifted to the Cluniacs the Church of St Mary at Acre, along with 30 acres of land. By the year 1085, an additional 240 acres of land had been given to the monastery. The Abbey of Cluny was one of the most influential monasteries ever established. It was founded in the year 910 in Burgundy in France by monks seeking a more religious interpretation of the 6th century rule of St Benedict. The rule of St Benedict would become the basis for the majority of medieval monastic life in Europe. The Cluniacs were distinguished by the length and rigour of their worship in church, governed as they were by minute systems of rules, and also by their love of art and decoration. The example set at Cluny attracted much donation, and by the year 1100 there existed about 700 monasteries that followed Cluniac custom. As the influence of the abbey at Cluny grew, other abbeys began to reform themselves to the Cluniac instruction. A great many of these ceased to be fully independent monasteries and became priories. For clarity, a priory means that the monastery is overseen by a prior, the second in command of an abbot, and in the case of the Cluniacs, the abbot at the abbey of Cluny. To the year 1154, with the support of the various kings and nobility, England saw the creation of more than 30 Cluniac priories. After the year 1200, Cluniac houses became more formally bound together, and the heads of each priory were required to attend an annual meeting, known as a chapter. By the mid-12th century, the Abbey of Cluny in Burgundy had amassed such wealth that it built the largest church in Europe only being surpassed in the 16th century by the Church of St Peter's in Rome. 
William de Warne died in 1088 and was succeeded by his son and heir, also called William. William de Warne II followed his father in the fields of military and politics, and although William allied himself to Robert Curthos in the unsuccessful invasion of England in 1101 against King Henry I, William changed sides and joined King Henry in defeating Curthos at the Battle of Tinchbray five years later. William was then frequently in the king's company and became celebrated for his loyalty to the crown, for which King Henry rewarded William with additional territories in Normandy and Yorkshire. In the year 1118, William de Warne married Isabel de Vermandois, shortly after the death of her first husband, Robert of Moulin. William and Isabel had been living together for some years prior to Moulin's death, and as observed in a 12th century chronicle, Isabel had been stolen by intrigue and treachery from Moulin. It was on William's initiative, probably in the year 1090, that the existing site of the priory was given to the monks. William further endowed the monks to help support a fully developed monastery. A charter from William details that he gave the monks two orchards and all the plough land from the said orchards up to my castle, in which they have founded their church, because that same place in which they now live is too confined and highly unsuitable for the dwelling of monks. The grant thoughtfully included a serf, a man named Ulmar the Mason of Acre. Construction of the priory was a slow process, and the church was not consecrated till at least the year 1146, and possibly as late as the year 1148. The west end of the church was only completed sometime in the 1160s. Following the priory's relocation from the castle grounds to the new site, the descendants of William de Warne continued to donate to the monastery. The last donation that is known was made by the 6th Earl de Warne in 1315. By the year 1291, the Priory held property in 50 parishes in Norfolk. These endowments provided the Priory with most of its income, largely in the form of rents, tithes, gifts, mills, farms, and the related charges for holy services, such as baptisms and burials. All of this naturally required a lot of time and effort to manage. Additionally, the Priory also held a sacred relic, the arm of the Apostle St. Philip, to which pilgrims donated a gift to view. By the year 1534, Acre Priory had an income of £306 a year, that's approximately £100,000 in today's money, placing it in the mid-range of English monasteries at the time. But this was still a long way from the richest monasteries in the land, some of whom had an income amounting to nearly three and a half thousand pounds, approximately one and a half million pounds today. The greatest expenditure of the monks at Acre was in giving alms, hospitality, maintenance of the monks, and the large number of servants that were required to run the priory. From the 13th century, periodic glimpses of the Priory's internal affairs were offered by the visitations of Cluniac officials, usually the priors of other houses. These visits were to report on the monks' finances and behaviour. The visitation of 1265 reported that the 32 brethren at Acre Priory were found to be living with propriety and regularity but they were rebuked for the habit of journeying and riding about the country, eating and drinking indifferently in the houses of laymen and secular persons. At the 1279 visitation, it was reported that the monk's conduct was satisfactory, although the prior found, rather curiously, to be both extravagant and eager to resign his position. Tensions also developed with Castle Acre's parent house at Lewis in Sussex largely because of its responsibility to Cluny for the Norfolk monks' behaviour and the appointment and conduct of their priors. Trouble erupted in 1283, when the Earl of Surrey, backed by the monks at Lewis, appointed their own candidate, William Shoreham, whilst at the same time the then current prior of Lewis was attempting to impose his own successor. The Earl's men clashed with the incumbent prior, and the matter was only settled by the intervention of the abbot of Cluny himself. In the next century, another dubious prior, in the form of William de Warne, 
half-brother to the Earl John de Warren, was made prior. William, however, absconded from his position as prior and was last heard of in 1351 living as a vagabond with a warrant out for his arrest. Towards the end of the 13th century, the priory was suffering from the threat and then the reality of war with France. Restrictions were placed on monasteries with French allegiances, and even though the monks at Acre were themselves mostly English, they became caught up in this struggle. Castle Acre was too far inland for the monks to be viewed as potential enemy agents, but by 1294 its community had shrunk due to the repatriation of the French monks. The renewal of hostilities with France in 1324 prompted the government to conduct an inventory of all alien property. When Castle Acre was examined on the 19th of October that year, the visitors noted that there was valuable silver vessels in the refectory, 18 gilded cups and several horses in the prior stable. To stop any further audits of their property, the priory responded by applying for and obtaining denizen status. Now safe from prying eyes, the later 14th century saw a revival of confidence at the Priory and a number of improvements were made to the buildings. As the number of monks at the Priory increased, so the buildings became further embellished and made more comfortable. After almost 1,000 years of development, the number of monasteries in England amounted to around 800. However, they were wiped out in the late 1530s by Henry VIII. The motive, if under the cover of politics and ideology, was ultimately the seizure of their wealth. The economic consequences of this, both good and bad, although much debated, were certainly enormous. The unquestionable catastrophe of the dissolution was the loss of so much of England's artistic and architectural heritage. Ruthlessly and systematically managed by the King's Chief Minister, Thomas Cromwell, the process of suppression began in 1535 with an investigation of the monastery's conduct. These visitations were partly intended, if not openly admitted, to build a case against the monastic institutions. The monks at Castle Acre, like many other monasteries, were charged with a catalogue of crimes, from self-abuse, fornication, to adultery. The year 1536 saw an Act of Parliament that led to the immediate suppression of the smaller monastic houses, with the larger institutions following between the years 1537 and 1540. The surrender of Castle Acre Priory was signed by the prior, Thomas Malling, and ten of the monks on the 22nd of November 1537. And although no definite records remain, the monks were likely to have been granted a small pension, and for some of the dispossessed monks, they became parish or chantry priests. The priory buildings and lands were then acquired by Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk. In the summer of the following year, 1538, the priory's demolition began. Surprisingly, help with the demolition process was provided by the Cluniacs from the monastery at Thetford. In the process, the Thetford monks rescued the arm of St Philip. The only building to survive the demolition was the prior's lodgings. This was retained as a house, and by 1577 it was said to provide spacious and agreeable lodgings for one gentleman. The grandson of Thomas Howard would sell Acre Castle and Priory to an English diplomat, Thomas Gresham, in 1558. In turn, Thomas's widow, Anne, sold the castle and priory to Thomas Cecil, son of Elizabeth I's Lord High Treasurer. William Cecil would then sell the property in 1615 to Sir Edward Coke, whose descendants retain ownership of the property to this day.